Yeah, can you give me a fish head? Not the long one, the consumable kind. Yeah, that. Alright. Oh, hey. Um, I decided it was finally time for me to cook something. I haven't eaten yesterday since 3 years ago, and I felt like I needed to rack up some nutrients. Speaking of... Yeah, I'm gonna be sticking to my diet for now. Video games are art. Most of the time. It can bring some of the greatest narratives ever made along with the gameplay and the soundtrack. Games can promise you unique experiences that you can't otherwise have in other forms of media. But there are a lot of things that can go wrong with video games. Development issues, lack of funds, failed expectations. These things are normal in the video game landscape and avoiding problems like these is difficult especially if you're directing a game. The team you're working with may not understand or wholeheartedly agree with your vision and because of that, you'll end up with a very conflicting product. But you can fix this problem through several options. You can talk to other team members to decide the most appropriate vision for the project. Or, amidst the evolving world of video games, a landscape that shares some of the best and worst games of all time, there are those that are not total successes or failures per se, but are just weird. These games are known for giving the most bizarre experiences in video games out there, pushing the limits of what is considered normal. Logic and reason are thrown down the drain and even make you question your choices in life. But some of these games are somewhat understandable in a way, so we're going to go through varying stages of the weirdest video games out there, starting from the least weird to bad shit insanity. And I think there's no better place to start than with Katamari Damacy. Originally released on the PS2 and later re-released on the 8th generation of gaming consoles, Katamari Damacy is a puzzle game where you grow the Katamari to a specific size within a given time frame. To do so, you have to roll the Katamari around to stick other objects to itself. The story follows the main character, the prince, sent by his dad the king of all cosmos, after accidentally destroying a huge portion of the universe save for Earth. The prince is given a Katamari, a magical ball that allows anything smaller than it to stick to it and make it grow, and he is tasked to collect enough material for his father to recreate the stars and the moon. This is the fun kind of a weird game, at least with the gameplay, the game actually gives a fair reason as to why you're curling up a giant ball of a bunch of random objects. You want to rebuild a planet? Use plastic, it helps. And this is all represented in a way that doesn't feel too removed from reality in my opinion. But this one might. Meme Run on the Wii U, finally a game on the Wii U. It's a simple game with endless platforming and memes. That's basically it. It says it right there in the title of the game. If you're always during the early stages of the internet, this is not the worst game you could play on a system that's not the worst video game console you could own. It's fine. It's better than any game I've seen on the App Store, but that's basically how much I can compliment this game. But this is where games are now striking above the least weird line of video games, or the YouTube guidelines. Catherine is a puzzle game developed by Atlas, the same guys behind the Persona series. During the daytime, you get to play as a guy named Vincent and you can interact with various characters at the Stray Sheep Bar. During nightmare segments, however, you must navigate through a bunch of block towers through puzzle solving. Sounds fun, I wonder what the story is like. I have no mouth and I must scream. Based on the short story with the same name, it's a point and click slash horror game where you have to defeat Am before he tortures you and four other victims. The weirdness factor obviously comes from the aesthetic of the game, but really it stems from the actual story. It's more horror than weird, sure, but if you've read or heard of the full story before, then you know there are some weird stuff that happens here. 
I would definitely recommend reading the story first because it's great and ultimately depressing. But the game itself is alright, the story definitely outshines the gameplay but everything else is alright. The Stanley Parable. You play as a mute office worker wandering through the office with no one to accompany you other than the narrator. This game's basically a buddy cop movie with a huge hint of existential dread. Because you have freedom of choice throughout the entire game, the game either rewards you with something you've never seen before or punishes you via the same way. You can beat the game within less than 5 hours, yet there's so much stuff that's packed in it. I love this game, I think it's one of the best indie games out there on the market. Alright, oh, so the reason why this game is a bit weird is because of how unique it is compared to any other story driven game out there. The narrator frequently breaks the fourth wall whenever you do something unexpected, giving you some surprising and mostly humorous outcomes. It's pure satire and many situations in the game are extremely exaggerated in a way that doesn't feel too forced. The game can break the traditional video game rules, defying logic and creating alternate realities. It's a simple but very thought provoking game. I highly recommend playing this game if you want to play something other than what you're playing right now because this is a really unique game. This one? Maybe. One of the most popular battle royale games of all time. It started out as a zombie shooter similar to Dead Rising and Left 4 Dead. Now it's basically the Smash Brothers of shooter games. We got Star Wars, Marvel, Halo, Witcher, John Wick, LeBron James, Peter Griffin, you name it. This doesn't make sense. I get it, it's a game where your favorite fictional characters fight each other to the death. It's the same premise as Smash Brothers, but what makes sense about Smash Brothers is that each individual character uses their unique abilities against each other. In this game, all you need is a double barrel shotgun and you can kill Kratos. Oh, and let's not forget about the racing game or the concert game. <gasps> oh fuck! Goat Simulator, you run around as a goat and unleash chaos wherever you go. No goat should have this much power. Thank god there's no election in this game. It's fun. Hylix. Imagine Earthbound, but on shrooms. This game has a very distinct art style and soundtrack that gives a surreal and bizarre vibe. The main takeaway here is the story. It's quite abstract and confusing as it's open to interpretation with its little dialogue and focus on visual storytelling. The gameplay itself is nothing much to talk about, it's just your standard turn-based RPG stuff. If you wish Picasso had made his own video game, then you're in the right place. Pass the logic. This is a first-person survival game where you find yourself in an abandoned town infested with a deadly plague, and your goal is to make sure to keep yourself and two other characters healthy within 12 in-game days. This game is known for its unsettling atmosphere and unconventional storytelling. The gameplay itself is challenging, where time is your enemy and every decision impacts the survival of the characters and the town itself. With how scarce the materials are and how bleak the setting is, you are driven to a place of psychological horror, existential themes, and moral ambiguity. Now we have come across a wide section of the weirdest video games out there. Some are fine, some that leave you speechless, some that generally doesn't make any sense, and others that are flat out weird. But there is one that surpasses everything beyond human comprehension that not even the brightest minds of humankind can ever conceive. I've been looking at this the whole time, I still don't know what this means. Virtual pet games are supposed to be cute and relaxing where you can turn off your brain and chill with a bunch of pets. This is torture. Seaman. In this game, you can talk to Seaman using a microphone who then responds with a surprising intellect and sarcasm. Seaman evolves over time, requiring specific conditions and attention. This is just unsettling. I can't even look at this thing. This wretched abomination of man is just disturbing. Since it talks like a normal human being, it m makes me uncomfortable. This game just feels like a psychological experiment. I don't like it. Well, back to eating rotten sandwiches.